Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Ark Survival Evolved. Today is going to be a story time day, but first, I made some changes to the house, and I wanted to show you guys. So I put that little triangle on top, um, which just made it nice, and it kind of completes the look. Hopefully I can fly through here. No. Okay. Um, so around back, if I can get out, there we go. So around back, I actually made the roof taller, which was a pain, but it worked out a lot better. And I put these sidewalls on, and I parked the vet and Grape and Mrs. Butt and Stella up here already. And I also made a staircase down, so we can get up and down real easily if we don't have a flyer. Uh, just straight up to the top. So, today we're going to be moving, and you're going to be listening to some stories. I am so excited about these. And remember, if you like them, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to see more awesome videos. Red's Journal, Entry 1 I'm not sure what's happening, but this morning I woke up on an island filled with dinosaurs. I don't remember who I am or why I'm here. I also have this strange implant in my arm that seems to act like an inventory and crafting system. So for now, survival is my number one priority. I have constructed a small thatch hut for the time being, and I hope it will provide some protection against the elements and the more hostile dinosaurs. Red's Journal, Entry 2 Today my plan was to go hunting around noon and get some hide for armor improvements. I had seen some dodos on the beach the other day that looked like they might be easy targets, but as I was out for my morning berry run, a raptor ran up on me and took a good chunk of my skin before I could make a run for it. Dang, those things are fast! I bolted back inside my house hoping it would give up and go away, but it didn't. It just hacked and slashed away at my home until there was almost nothing left of my walls, and then I finally killed it with a spear. Survival note, stay away from raptors. Adeline the Pteranodon There once was a faithful Pteranodon named Adeline. Adeline grew up with her mother and father, and she loved them, but they did not love her. They would send her off into the forest to collect meat and resources for their nest, and after a long day she would come home and her parents would punish her for having done any little thing wrong. You brought home spoiled meat, you imbecile, they would say. And you brought home too much thatch. I told you exactly 100, and you brought 102. Almost every day she would mess up in the slightest, and they would punish her, sometimes even beating her and leaving her outside of the nest for any wild dino to eat. After many years of this, she thought she must not be a good enough to rain it on, but she always continued to try her hardest to be perfect, and always stayed loyal to her parents. One day, while she was out gathering resources, her parents were at home lounging around the nest, and out of nowhere, an Argentavis flew into the nest and killed Adeline's mother and father. When Adeline returned to the nest, she was shocked to see that the nest had been destroyed, and her parents were dead. She was so sad that her parents were gone, and after a few days of mourning their death, she went off in search of a new place to build her own nest. As she was looking around for the perfect spot, she all of a sudden couldn't move, and she was being shot at with trank arrows. Ow! That hurts! she exclaimed, but she couldn't move, and it was not long until she was overcome by the tranquilizer and fell asleep. When she woke up, she felt different. She had been tamed by a survivor named Red, who then gave her the nickname Green Skeleton. She was so happy to be part of a family again, and she promised to serve and protect her family as long as she lived. One day, while Trichosaurus Rex was showing her a card trick, a Cardo came into the base. Immediately, she, Trichosaurus Rex, and Red went to attack it. The Carno ran this way and that, chomping and destroying left and right but Green Skeleton was determined to kill it and protect the base as best she could. She flew around and around, hacking at the Carno again and again. Trichosaurus Rex, Green Skeleton, and Red kept on fighting, and eventually the Carno looked very bloody, like he was about to die any minute. But that's when Green Skeleton flew a bit too close to the Carno's mouth, and with one massive bite, she was down on the ground. The Carno ripped her to shreds before Trichosaurus Rex could finish him off. As she lay there bleeding and dying, she vowed that she would still protect her home, even in death. Red's Journal, Entry 3 
Life here on what I'm calling the center is gruesome and time-consuming. All waking hours have been spent gathering and building, and now taming, too. I have discovered that the black berries here have tranquilizing abilities, and that I can use them to tame some of the dinosaurs. I tested it out on a triceratops, and it worked quite well. It seems that the berries also form somewhat of a psychic link between myself and that dinosaur. My trike has been recounting his life experiences with me, and I'm finding it quite interesting. He said his name was Trichosaurus Rex, which I thought was funny, but I went with it. Red's Journal, Entry 4 Today, I made a bola and successfully tamed a pteranodon, which I named Green Skeleton, due to the coloring on its back. She seems very loyal and promised to always do her best to serve and protect me. I think we will get along quite well. Red's Journal, Entry 4.5 it has only been about half a day, and a carno came into the base. Green Skeleton and Trichosaurus Rex fought valiantly, but alas, Green Skeleton died. She will be greatly missed. However, I needed to acquire another Pteranodon, so I set off again in search of one, and instead came back with two. One was named Grasputin, which I shortened to Grape, and the other has yet to tell me their name. Neither of them are at all like Green Skeleton, but I think they will serve me well. Fredessa the Beaver A few years after they had gotten the news that their son Luke had been killed by a carno, Frank and his wife Meredith had another baby beaver. This time it was a girl, and they named her Fredessa after Fred, the beaver who helped Frank fight the carno they encountered all those years ago. After all that had happened to Frank and Meredith over the years, they were determined to raise Fred as safely as they could. They both took her wherever they went and never left her alone. Growing up, Fred enjoyed being around her parents so much and loved them dearly, but as she grew older, she became more and more frustrated with how cautious her parents were. She wasn't allowed to jump from the top of the dam, she wasn't allowed to talk to strangers, she wasn't even allowed to go off to gather wood by herself. And above all, if she were to ever see a carnivore, she was to run back to the dam as fast as she could. One day, during recess at Beaver School, a carno was spotted a little ways away. And as they were all filing back into school, one of the bully beavers came over to her and whispered in her ear. I dare you to go attack that carno, he said. I really shouldn't, Fred said. My parents always told me to stay as far away from carnivores as I can. Oh, I'm sure your parents are so proud of their little baby beaver. Fred really wanted to prove herself to her parents and to the beaver bully. So she snuck off to go fight the carno. The colonel was strong, but sure enough, she killed it, and couldn't wait to tell her parents of her accomplishment. When she got home and told them, however, they weren't happy. What were you thinking? You could have been killed, they said. I just wanted to prove myself, to show you that I'm not a baby anymore, and that I can protect myself, said Fred. Fred, we are your parents, and as such, you should listen to us and obey us. We just want you to be safe, and even though you're right that you're not a baby anymore, you aren't ready to fend for yourself yet. Oh, really? Well, I'll show you. And with that, Fred ran away. She ran as fast as she could, vowing to prove her parents wrong. She could fend for herself. Of course she could. She ran and ran and ran, and then she ran just a little bit more. Through her tears she ran, not knowing where she was going, only knowing that she had to go. All of a sudden, she hit something big and metal and hard. Before she could look up to see what it was, she was teleported to a whole new world called the center. As she looked around, she realized that she had hit an obelisk. She had heard that they had strange powers, but she didn't know it was capable of bringing her to a different island. Wow, she exclaimed. This place is amazing and beautiful. She began to explore, and soon, she came to a nice big pond where she saw lots of other beavers. Maybe I could settle in here, she thought to herself. And as she began to build her dam, a big glowing rex wandered into the pond and began munching on everything in sight. Uh, I don't think this place is for me, she said, and ran away as fast as she could. She came to another pond that had other beavers around and thought, maybe here will be good. But as she was gathering wood, 
She saw some snakes and spiders near the entrance to a cave pretty close to the pond. Ew, gross spiders. Spiders give me the creeps. So she went to find another pond. As she was walking, she began to think of home and her parents and how much she missed them. She hadn't thought about that before. She loved her parents and sure she wanted to prove that she could fend for herself, but the idea of never seeing her parents again was more than she could bear. She abandoned the search for a new pond and ventured back to the obelisk. Once she got there, however, she couldn't figure out how it worked. She tried running into it like she thought she had before, but it didn't work. She thought maybe there was a button you had to hit, but she couldn't find one. After trying everything she could think of, she gave up and collapsed in a fit of tears. All of a sudden, she felt two paws on her little beaver shoulder. It was her parents! Her parents were here! How did you find me? Fred asked. We searched everywhere on the island for you. We asked all around until we found somebody who said they saw you disappear at the obelisk. They showed us how to activate it, and that's how we got here. I'm so glad you found me. I really missed you, and I realized that you were right. I'm not quite ready to be on my own yet. Can I still live with you? Of course, Fred. We love you so much and always want you to be close by. So they all ventured off in search of a nice pond where they decided to make their new home together on the center. Red's Journal, Entry 5 I am discovering new things every day. I have tamed a giant beaver and she is amazing at gathering wood. She will make life so much easier. I also tamed a crazy Argentavis who I found out is actually the mom of Grasputin. Not really sure how that's possible. I didn't really fully understand their story, but they're happy together, so that's nice. Red's Journal, Entry 6 I'm starting to feel a bit safer now. I have been here a little while and have mostly come to terms with life here, although I still have unanswered questions. So I decided it was time to really apply myself, and if I'm going to live here, I'm going to need a big house. Fred has been helping me out so much with resource gathering, and it is making the process not so terrible. But as I was building the first layer of my house today, I saw something in the window that looked like a pteranodon. I went over to look, and there was nothing there. I began to feel a ghostly presence, and that's when the ghastly form of a pteranodon appeared to me. I was frightened, obviously, but then I came to realize that I knew this pteranodon. It was Green Skeleton, living out her promise to always protect and serve. She told me that even though she couldn't carry anything or anyone, she could use her ghostly powers to fend off unwanted visitors. Beware any enemies who trespass on Red's land, for they will get a right good scaring. I now feel even safer knowing that I always have a ghostly protector. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Storytime. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button if you want to see more Storytime, and subscribe so you can see all the past Storytimes. See you guys next time.